All right, Shalom, Shalom. We are the real Hebrew Israelites coming day in and day out to prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great, which is America. First off and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, and Karkadash. Double honors to the other apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to the elect, whoever you may be. This is the brother Shapaya. From GMS Chicago, coming at you again with a quick lesson. Um, this is bouncing off. Uh, let me go to my YouTube. Uh, Salaki, like Salaki, like bear with me. Bear with me, bear with me. Right, I'll do it this way. Bouncing off the the Elder Yashawamba uh, video from GMS Dallas. Uh, I'm gonna pull it up real quick. I mean, the brother had a nice little talk on the phone, and it sparked him to do a lesson. And then watching his lesson. <laughs> spark me to do one <laughs> through the spirit all right and as you see when will we get an answer from the comedic gods all right and then he did another one uh yesterday which i don't watch yet but it was one he did he says shalom first and foremost i want to give all praises to the heavenly father yahweh right. bahasham how will uh, save us? Rahah And what's next? Double right? honors. Which is which is indeed like where's the answers? Where is the answers in Kemet? Where is the prophecies in Kemet? And why did the Kemetic gods allow this to happen to Egypt? All right, now you could. These are nothing but ruins, man. That no, nobody's living in there. The Sphinx, the pyramids, all this, all this shit is in ruins, man. Okay? All of it. Look at this shit. Dude, this is nothing but a tourist site nowadays, man. All right? I mean, do the comedic God, gods want to be toured or do they want to be worshipped? <laughs> you know, why did your gods allow this to happen to ancient Egypt? Now... Why did Yahweh, why did the God of Israel allow us to fall? Well, guess what? We have the script, uh, the scriptures to actually explain to us why. Let me get it, man. And, and that's the difference, man. That's that's the that's the difference. Rock, uh, Baruch 2 and 4. Moreover, he have delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us. All right? Assyria, Babylonia, Medio Persia, Greece, Rome, now Babylon the Great. All right? And, and not only that, all you other nations. We have subjection to all these other nations today. All right? Among all the people around them, where Yahweh have scattered them. Thus, we were cast down and not exalted. So we were broken down. We fell, all right, because we have sinned against our Lord. I mean, I don't want uh, Yahweh and have not been obedient to his voice. To the Lord, our power, our power appertain of righteousness. But unto us and to our fathers, open shame. All right. Which is what? The confusion of, of faces. That That's the, the shame. All right. That's the shame. Us not knowing who the hell we are. Okay. But unto us and our fathers, open shames as appear of this day. For these plagues come upon us, which Yahweh have pronounced against us. 
All right. And what did the Lord pronounce against us? All right. Matter of fact, let's jump to 10. Yet we have not hearkened unto his voice to walk in the commandments of the Lord that he has set before us. So that should automatic, automatically take you to the uh, the curses and the blessings, which you're going to get. Um, let me get this, Baruch 3 and 4. O Lord Almighty, thou power of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children, which have sinned before thee and not hearkened to the voice of thee, their power. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. What plagues? All right. What plagues? All right. I believe it's one in, um, yep, Baruch 4. Baruch 4 and 6 and 7. All right? The, the, these are scriptures from thousands of years ago that tells you why Israel is in the situation he's in today. And I'm, when I say Israel, I'm speaking of all the Israelites. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved Yahweh to wrath, ye were delivered unto your enemies. For you provoked them, I mean, provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not the power. So we wanted to do everything the heathens was, was doing. We wanted to have multiple gods. We wanted this. We wanted that. We wanted a king. Things of that nature, right? That was the cause of our falling, the great falling away, all right? Which uh, actually the great falling away goes into, uh, you know, when we got kicked, when we fled from Rome, all right? Because like, all hell broke loose during uh, 70 AD, you know, uh, 67 through 70 AD. Yay. Ye have forgotten, so like ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. Okay, so let's, let's get this. So now we understand why. Now, when you go to Deuteronomy 28, these are the blessings and the curses. I do Deuteronomy 28 and 1, and it should come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to observe and to do all the commandments which I command thee this day. Because remember, it said we didn't keep the commandments in the group. That Yahweh thy power will set thee on high above all the nations of earth. And all these blessings should come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power. But we didn't listen. So we weren't placed high above the nations. We were made the tail. Okay? We were made the tail. Alright. 15. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou shalt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And you could, we could read a couple of these. Curse shall thou be in the city, curse shall thou be in the field. All right? So in the city, in the country, you're going to be cursed. And more importantly, in Babylon the Great, you're going to be cursed anywhere in this planet Earth, anywhere else in this world, a.k.a. the field, like Matthews talks about. All right? You're cursed. Curse should be thy basket and thy store. So-called black businesses. The mass majority of them don't really prosper. All right? You got a couple out there. All right? But, hey, the, the, our basket and thy store, hey, it's cursed. Curse be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. Hey, these kids are cursed. These little monsters out here. All right? Uh, 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 and once again, it says what? The fruit of thy land, the increase of thy king. And the flocks of thy sheep. So all our so-called businesses, all right, are things things of that nature. A hey, Black Wall Street was uh, just one of many examples. All right, it's all cursed. Nineteen, cursed should thou be when thou comest in. Cursed should thou be when thou goest out. All right. Twenty, the Lord shall send these curses, and exaction and rebuke, and all that 
uh, and all that thou saidest thy hands to do until thou be destroyed. So everything that we do, all right, it, it gets fucked up because we're under the curses. Until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doing, whereby thou hast forsaken me. All right. And like I said, hey, let's get, let's get this. Oh, yeah. Deuteronomy 28, 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Thou shalt come down very low. Hey. The the la the last nation on the totem pole. All right, you you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the ones that scattered across the earth. Moreover, all these uh, Salakia, he shall lend it to thee, and thou shalt not lend it to him. All right, who owns the banks? You so called white people. More importantly, these Khazars, these Jewish people. All right, that's who we gotta go get the loans from. You got this comedic community. We gotta build our own businesses. We gotta do this. That's that's going to go against the curses. Name me one great comedic community we have in America today that is prospering. You, you ain't going to find none. Show me a comedic city in America where everybody is loving each other, growing plants, and businesses are, are, are booming. You ain't going to find one. All you find is arguments. All you find is the next dirty nigger Trying to get a debate and trying to get a a, a, a dollar. And polite, a polite been scamming you niggas for years. All right. Shaka outmost look like a shaka homo. All right. Are all these weird ass niggas, man? Young Pharaoh, whoever the fuck they are, you, you niggas are goofy. None of that is prospering any community. Now you say what well, what Israelite community you have? That's what. Listen, according to the curses, we ain't gonna have that. We ain't gonna have that. And according to the scriptures, it's only about the elect. Whether we have two dollars or whether we have a million dollars, it's only about the elect, and we help out each other. That's the community, the spiritual community of the elect. All right. It says, verse uh, forty-five. More of all these curses should come upon thee. I'll slack it. Let me read 44 again. He shall lend it to thee, and thou shalt not lend it to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Like I, like I just explained. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee. Now you got these niggas in there. Oh, God is a woman. God, man, all, all the stories of these different gods are bullshit, man. All right? Verse 46. And they should be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So, let's get one of these. Let's get one of these curses. And I'm just look it up. It should be in the 40s, Salakia. Let me get the yoke of iron. All right, it's Deuteronomy 2848. Yeah, I knew it was in the 40s. Now, check this out. And this is what I mean. Where, where are the prophecies in commit? That's the number one thing that pops up. Yoke of iron. It could have been a yoke of iron on the ox. It could have been a yoke of iron on anything else. But the first thing that pops up is these slavery images of Jake. Okay? Okay? There you go. What, what, what more do you guys want? All right, it should be a sign upon thee and thy seed forever. This is the sign of who the hell we are. Not no comedic bullshit. Okay? Wait, wait, wait let's see some. Let's see some. Let's 
Now, this was a prophecy that it's not even a prophecy because it was written after the so-called uh, uh, whatever the fuck that happened. Um, let's go to the content. The prophecies of Net uh, Nefreti is set in a fictional court. <laughs> of King Senefu, who ruled Egypt during the fourth dynasty, the sage Netafarity, is summoned to the court so that he can entertain the king with fine speeches. He is asked to speak of the future rather than the past. The sage prophesies the downfall of the Egyptian nation by civil war, leading to an eventual atonement of the nation through the rise of a great king. According to Neferi, or if I'm, I'm probably not saying that name right, whatever. Uh, this king, Emini, will redeem the chaos, banish enemies, and set all right. So that, that hasn't happened. That, that has not fucking happened. And what was the reason for this happening? And like I said, you go up here, this thing could be argued and debated of what he was actually saying. All right? Now let's let's go to the various arguments. It says, I'm just go straight to the point. Alright, I'm starting right here. The most widely accepted interpretation revolves around the theory that it was produced of propagandistic literature established for the newly established twelfth dynasty under the rule of the king Amenahat. The first, this was an early interpretation and numerous others have now considered Haynes Geodicky or Dyke or, or however you want to say it, Geodick, in his book that the protocols of Nefreti argues that the text does not contain a prophecy of the future events, but an elaboration of existing conditions in in the eastern border region and potential dangers resorting their form. This, much like in, in, in all Egyptian history, is a debated idea. It is important to note, though, being in the, it place, being that it, it places the prophecy of Neferity in a new light and takes away the possible glorification of Minimat I instead of place places, I mean, and instead places the proposed, the purpose of the literature text as one used to change and to prove the situation in Egypt. All right, I'm gonna get into all this land of chaos, turmoil, whatever. Let's see if we can find some more. All right, because You ain't gonna find shit, man. Let's see what we get. Troth, the book of Troth, right? Let me just get to the point. Now, this is just one of the stories of creation, I believe. Where's the prophecies? It's just the fucking history. Oh, Did you see it? It, it? 
you know, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't give you any prophecies about the, the so-called black man, all right, why he's in the condition he's in, all right, and things of that nature. You, you, you just don't find it. Hold on, let me see this. Hey, nothing about you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. I'm pretty sure you could pick one of these and just go straight into it. You know, some of them probably be going off. But I guarantee you, I'm pretty sure they going, they going clean off. And the book of Ezekiel talks about certain things that's going to happen to Israel. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Haggai. All right. When you, when you go into those prophets, they all prophesy about something with Israel. Tobit, because the internet only helps you so much. All right. Things of that nature. Prophecy can met about. Let's do this. It's people. Same shit. It has nothing to do with the people. It's really just mainly talking about the God. So what's the condition of you Negroes and Latinos and Native Americans? Hmm? Why, wait, wait. Let's go to this. And this is something in, in, in your history. All right. This is um, a papyrus dating back to the Middle Kingdom. Which talks about what happened in Egypt during the time of Moses. All right, you can compare and contrast what was written on the left with what was written on the right. Now, this is something that happened in Egypt's history. Why did the gods, why didn't the gods of Egypt come through for the Egyptians? What happened? Is it because those gods never existed? Now, I know you had dark magicians in Egypt. And priest of that nature, which the left hand side is real, all right. So when things happen on the left hand side, it causes people to believe in that left hand. Those are no gods; those are just angels, if you uh, will, that works for the Most High to get you people to go off. And nonetheless, why didn't those gods of Egypt save the Egyptian people? Hmm. Or more importantly, let's do this. Egyptians are predominantly adherents to Sunni Islam. <laughs> why? Why none of these people? Why none of these people in, in in Egypt are Kemetic? Why is that? Why are these people within this region not worshiping the Egyptian gods? Let's, let's go to Nubians. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Which the real uh, 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 Egyptians, like the Sudanese, the, the the tall ones, all right? They got pushed out of Egypt, man. But 
Let, let's see. What's their religious beliefs? Let's go to modern Nubians. Which, these ain't them. Trust me. You'll know them by their fucking height. These just look like some fucking Arabs. All right? Let's go into the culture. Let's see, let's see. Here we go. <laughs> Today's <N> Nubians <laughs> practice Islam. <laughs> so, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Why is it your gods kicked y'all out of Egypt and put these Arabs in Egypt, in Sudan and things of that nature? Why? Where is it in your fucking text? That tells you that these things were going to happen to you. And how are you going to come out of this situation? It doesn't. It fucking does it, man. All right? You guys are just some Coptic, comedic dumbasses, man. All right? That's, that's really it. You talking about you playing chess? Nigga, listen. The game was over when you <laughs> became comedic. It was game over. It was checkmate. Nigga, you already in the trick bag. Okay, at least. Let's get some scriptures. Huh. The Lord promised us. Amos 9 and 11. And that day will I raise up the tabernacles of David that is fallen because it was prophesied that we was going to fall and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins as I built as in the days of old. And they should possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith Yahweh, that doeth this. All right. So we're going to, when you go to Obadiah, it talks about us having the lands of the south and things of that nature, which south of Judah is Edom. All right, so we're going to have the people in their land. This is what the Lord promised us. You you can't find that in in, in, in uh, uh, Kemet. Um, let me get this. Mm. See, the, the Lord is building us up now. All right. First Peter's two and five. Yet also as lively stones are built up in spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. OK, we're, we're being built right now. We're starting to get placed on high. All right. The Lord he said he's going to make us famous in all the lands where we're scattered. All right. Matter of fact, what was I just thinking? I got two. Let me get these two out. All right. Uh, look, like you say, rest uh, restoration of Judah. All right. Isaiah 14 and 1. For Yahweh will have mercy upon Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers should be joined into them. And they should cleave into the house of Jacob, which are the Israelite foreigners, man, which we all were. OK, which goes with the scripture. Uh, they should take hold of the skirt of him that is, that is a Jew. All right. But verse two and the people shall take them and bring them into their own place. Like the scriptures say, the, these people are going to be our nursing mothers, uh, uh, carrying our children, carrying us. All right. And the house of Israel shall possess them. All right. Who the, the same niggas that serving us? We're going to possess them. In the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids, and they should take them captives, who captives they were, and they should rule over their oppressors. And who's our oppressors? Starting with you so-called white people. Esau, Edom. Where's this in Kemet? Where is it at? You ain't going to find it. All right? You ain't going to find it. 
Psalms 2. I'm going straight to the point. Verse 8, Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me and I should give thee the heathen for thy inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron and thou shalt dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Hey, are, are you guys promised that to commit? I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so. All right. Are you promised glory? I don't think so. I do not think so. Uh, There's another one that I was looking for. That's 19. So, like, it's, it's another one. Like, chapter 22. Um, no, this ain't the chapter I'm looking for. Where is it at? That's 24. All right, now 25 goes into... How Yahweh is going to save us, man. Okay. So this, this chapter goes into how the Lord is going to bring these strangers down and, and bring us up. My family will just go straight to the point. Matter of fact, Isaiah 25 9. He will swallow up death and victory, and Yahweh thy power will wipe away the tears from all faces, which you can find out in Revelation, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off the earth, for Yahweh have spoken it. And it should be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is our. Uh, this is Yahweh. We have waited for him, and he will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. All right. As a matter of fact, ten because we're going to get victory over our enemies, and in this mountain shall the hand of Yahweh rest. All right, the, the, the mountain of Israel. That's what the Lord is going to dwell amongst us, and Moab should be trodden down under him. Even the straw is trodden down in dung hill. Okay? So, hey, these people are going to get fucked up. Look at this. Judah song of victory. Okay? So, this talks about how we went from a low place to a high place. All right? Yahweh Bashim Yahshua is going to set her upon high. All right? And look, Israel's re redemption. Okay? Indeed, these are all prophecies. It talks about the siege. Hey, it talks about the siege of Jerusalem. All right. And look, hope for the future. <laughs> all right. And I think this is 29 is the one I was looking for. All right. But you, you're, you're not going to find prophecies like this anywhere else. Wait. Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. No one of these shall fail. Talking about the uh, prophecies. None shall want her mate. Nothing could be compared to the Bible. For the mouth, for my mouth it had commanded, and my spirit had gathered them. All right. That's what I mean. You you can find answers in the Bible. You can't find no answers in Kemet. Because there's no answers in Kemet. There's no fucking answers in Kemet, man. You go into Ezekiel, it talks about how the heathen are in our land and how the Lord's going to take them out and put us in. Obadiah, how he's going to take down this Edomite and place us above him. How we're going to put these people in chains according to Psalms 149, Psalms 137. Okay. Um. 
uh, uh, Revelations, uh, uh, the 13th chapter, okay? Uh, uh, Jeremiah 51 and 20, how the Lord is going to give us spiritual powers to take down this earth. We have promises, and you guys are without hope, man. All right, Egypt is in ruins. Egypt has Arabs that believe in Islam. All the why? Why did your Egyptian gods allow that to happen? Why? At least we have cause and effect in the Bible. Okay. We have answers in the Bible. Why did this happen, Lord? Because you did this. Okay, so why did this happen, Lord? Because you did this. And everything makes sense. You you get to the comedic shit. I can read half of that shit. Oh, oh my gosh. Hey, this shit is just nutty as hell, man. All right, nutty as fuck. How how how, how are the Israelites gonna? I mean, how are you uh, you uh, comedic people? How do you rise again? How? You can't say businesses because you guys do not control. The world reserve dollar. You, you don't control the banks. You don't control shit. The only thing you control is the shit that goes on. This is the only thing y'all can control. This is it. All right. And this nigga have a new Black Panthers. All right. This nigga is just in all types of bullshit, man. That's it. Nothing but. Nothing but debates. Debates, debates, debates. That's it. It's nothing but drama. Nothing but drama. And this nigga is getting paid off this. Dumb shit, man. And listen, all you niggas, uh, all you dumb niggas and all you bitches. I'm going to say it like that. All you niggas that's involved in this, are y'all worthy for fucking death? Unless you repent, man. You de Hey, these the niggas. I, 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 I'll end it on this. Egyptian, uh, Egyptian, Exodus 14 and 12. For not this word, is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it is better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. The, those, those type of niggas, man. Hold on. Where is it at? Numbers 11 to 4. And the mixed multitude, which was among them, fell a lusting. All right, because you had um, you had certain Egyptians down there, like the Egyptian woman, all right, who had a son, all right, who, um, who should give us flesh to eat. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But our soul, soul is dried away, and there's nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. So guess what? Not only did it mix multitude, you, you other Israelites complained of it. All right? Because it talked about the people. All right? Matter of fact, verse 1. And when the people complained, it displeased Yahweh, and Yahweh heard it, and his anger was kindled, kindled, and the fire of Yahweh burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the utter marsh, uh, utter so like it, uttermost parts of the camp. All right. All right. Now check this out. Moses heard the people weep throughout their families. Every man at the door of his tent, because the Lord kept slaughtered the ass. And the anger of the Lord was was uh, kindled greatly, and Moses was displeased. All right? And then Moses went further to tell him, well, basically what all the other nations are going to say. You brought these people out of Egypt just to kill them. But the Lord was, hey, 
He was trying to ass, man. He had to cut off the fucking fat. All right? Because these niggas wanted to stay in Egypt. These niggas. These dumb ass niggas, man. And what's the other one? Black fucking black news. And that rumor was put out. Somebody came to him years ago. This nigga like a fucking retard, bro. All right? Complete folly, man. Debates, debate. This fucking coke head right here. One thing that you better do and said he better do, he better do his research. That's it. This is all the shit is. All right? And this nigga don't listen without the there's like this this nigga got shit. Alright, nobody wanna watch a fucking comedic versus another pan Africanism. Alright? And deep down inside you niggas are gonna be judged. So with that, hey, okay, this was edifying. Say all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem Kadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and salutations to the elect where we may be. And listen, I'm telling you something. You comedic niggas are just like these pictures I'm showing. You you are in ruins. <laughs> Shalom.